We have a foaming base, which is basically like a pop additive. Uh, we have reflectolite sheets, and then we also have the reflectolite in a powder form. So you would add it to a glitter base or something like that, and that's how you would get a reflective. Um, like I said, crack base. Technically, I don't know why that's on there. Uh, Underbase blocker, gray black. That's not really a special effect. That's to prevent dye migration. Now, if you've ever printed with, how many of you have printed plastisol, gray blockers, or black blockers? Any, anybody? You know how thick they are? How they basically turn your print into a bulletproof proof vest? Water base doesn't do that. And water base actually works a little bit better for blocking than plastisol. The reason that is, is because with plastisol, you're using a plasticizer to envelop your molecule, right? So what's in it is charcoal, and that's why it's black or gray. Um, and what happens is you basically have your, your molecule and then you have the plasticizer around it. The reason water base actually works better is because you're evaporating that water out and it's pure pigment. Pure charcoal basically sitting on top of it. That's why it's usually kind of granular. Um, Real yeah. quick, we kind of also breezed over um, dye migration. Right. Does anybody here not know what dye migration is? You might have seen it, but you don't really know what it, what it is. Feel free to raise your hand, it's okay. We got an to anybody else? All right. So. I feel like it's probably more than you than just that, so I'll go over the book anyways. You gotta talk about dye migration is really sublimation. Uh, it's because anytime something goes from a solid to a gas, skipping the liquid stage, the scientific term for that is sublimation. Um, ideally, that should be happening to a closer to 290 plus. Uh, unfortunately, it does tend to happen some of the lower temperatures. We can see it as low as 270, and that's where that solid will just literally turn to a gas. Which direction can gas go? That's it, it's done, the one goes up, right? So if you've got ink over the top of gas and that gas has got, from a pigment, a color, it's a colored gas trying to go the only way it can go. It's gonna go right into your ink and end up trying to find its way through a semi-porous substrate, which is what ink comes out to. If you look under, under a loop, it's kind of porous, it's like a thick sponge, right? It's gonna try to find its way, it's gonna end up giving up and settling down. That's why you ship white on a red and your customer gets pink on red, right? And you're like, son of a, that's what happened there. So it's actually not your ink manufacturer's fault. It's also not your fault. Technically, it's your garment manufacturer's fault. They're not doing the proper steps to wash up extra dye or posi charge or all the fun stuff they can do to try to settle those pigments down. So that's where the barrier-based blocker, and you might have heard even for plastisol, you call your TNJ rep and they're like, oh, you got it, you can this thing. And you're like, you, you're trying to sell me some BS, right? No, it's literally for water-based or plastisol. You need to, if you really, really, really want to make sure you're not going to have this happen to a good customer, you have to have something that has carbon loaded charcoal in there that helps kind of uh, soak up and block these these gases from escaping from the surface of the egg. Yeah, and I will say, if you're making a list of must-haves for water-based printing, I would put a gray blocker on there. You should have it in your shop. But it's going to help with not only preventing dye migration from 100% poly stuff, but your tri-blends, your 50-50s, it's going to help with all that, plus it is a really good matting agent. So to get your those fibers to lay down flat, if I lay down that gray blocker first, it flattens that out and then my colors go on top way smoother and nicer and everything everything just lays down there. So your LSAs and your HSAs can both go over the top of yes. the blocker, right? So Correct. not obviously going to be anything for discharge here. Uh, one question too, uh, there's a, a, a company, uh, Justin Barrel Maker, um, great job. They're using a couple of different products, a lot of you guys' products now too. Um, he's doing something that I had always kind of been told is a no-no that seems to be working okay for him. He's actually using your underbase blocker under Plastisol. Yeah, that's very true. You can always print Plastisol on top of a water base, just so you know.